Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day today. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys as much information that I know about how you can make your own anime. Overall, if you're a beginner and you want to make your own anime, short film, web series, or whatever it is you might want to do, I think this will help. I'm going to go over some different things you'll want to consider when making your own series along with creating your story and having the right things in mind when you're tackling such a large project. When making your own anime, there are so many things to cover, so if there's anything that I don't mention in this video, be sure to leave some questions in the comments that I can revisit with the second part to help you guys out. Let's get into it. So if you've done any research on what it takes to make an actual anime with a professional studio, you'd probably come to realize that it can cost up to $300,000 to make just one episode. Now, don't shit bricks, I know what you're thinking, I don't have $300,000, what am I gonna do? Trust me, I'm in the same boat as you, I'm a 19 year old who works a minimum wage job, I get it. Now, what does this mean to the average person that doesn't have an unbelievably large amount of money to spend? Well, it means you need to work harder. Simply put, if you don't have a lot of money and a big team to help you work on this, it's gonna take a lot of time. And I can understand how this is discouraging to people just getting into this type of thing. And before anybody freaks out, I promise I know just because you have a lot of money and a big team to help you do this, that doesn't mean that each individual isn't busting their ass. All I'm saying is that without those things, as a creator, you need to improvise for what you're missing. So listen, it's the beginning of the video, so far I can see how this may seem overwhelming, but let me explain something that you need to understand. Making an entire anime, whether it's just a few episodes or multiple seasons, is objectively a lot of work. And if you aren't prepared to dedicate a lot of time and effort into your series, then it's going to be a rocky road. Making an anime is fun, it's exciting to create a universe and watch it come to life for you and your viewers, and in my experience I love it. Just understand that at times it's okay to feel overwhelmed, it's okay to take breaks, and it's okay to have setbacks. It takes a long time to make these things, so make sure you're interested and passionate about what you're creating or you might find yourself with the headache overall just have fun with it don't stress yourself out and turn it into something that feels like a job making an anime is difficult at times but if this is something that you are passionate about i promise that you can do it so personally i really enjoy this part of the process because at this point you are creating an entire universe and what's happening inside of it when it comes to writing your story you need a world that makes sense and characters that make sense and because of this i like to create the world first you want to ask yourself, is this a fantasy setting or is this maybe a more futuristic setting? Are you going for a realistic type of deal or are you going for a more fictional universe? This right here is going to create your foundation for the laws that you're going to put into place. And once you answer those questions, you can start building off of that. For example, you can think of things like currency, how all the people in your story buy things. You can also think about things like superpowers and how they shape the world into what it currently is. All of these questions are important to creating depth and a world that your audience can throw themselves into. It's also important to make sure you eliminate any inconsistencies that you come across to prevent any possible plot holes. Remember, this universe needs to make sense to the viewer so nothing feels too confusing while also keeping the story authentic. Now, once you've done this, it's time to get to the actual story itself. When writing your story, try and categorize it into whatever genre you're aiming for, whether you want to make more of a shonen, romance, comedy, slice of life, you name it. That's completely up to you. And don't be scared to mix things up. Maybe you want to do an action-packed horror or a romantic comedy. That's completely okay because it's your story and you make it exactly how you want. Now, the most important factor of your story is tied to the world building I mentioned earlier is your characters. Your characters are what your story follows, so it's important to take as much time as possible into creating them and making them feel real. You want to ask yourself, who are they? Why are they the way they are? How do they act towards others and what is their purpose? Do they have goals? Do they have struggles? How does the world affect them? Are they dumb? Are they smart? All of these are great questions when creating your character that feels genuine and relatable. Questions you can also ask yourself are, is there one main character or is there multiple main characters? Who is the antagonist? Who is the protagonist? How do they interact? There are so many ways to approach a story that would take forever to cover here, but I do feel like these are great places to start. This part of the video is going over what you'll actually need to animate. So first things first is hardware. Personally, I do all my animation on my iPad, which is not the standard for the actual animators. They usually have computers that are optimized for that because 10 times out of 10, computers are the way to go for top-notch softwares. However, if you have a tablet, there are programs you can still use that will get the job done. Just keep in mind, most softwares you'll find with an iPad or any other standalone tablet won't be as good as programs you'll find made for a computer. So to wrap it all up, you'll need a tablet or a computer to get these animation programs. I know some people may not have these, so they animate on their phones, which by the way, good luck. But if I had to rank it best to worst, it would be PC, tablet, mobile device. Now to the first software on my list and the one I personally use, Procreate. Procreate is a one-time purchase of only $10, but the biggest catch is that it's only on iOS. Overall, the software is more focused on illustration than animation, but it provides a bare minimum of tools that you would need. It gives you your timeline, onion skins, and changeable frame rate, but the reason I love it is because of its actual drawing tools that are loaded into the app. 
it's overall pretty solid and if you have an ipad it's the cheapest option with the most benefits so i definitely check it out if you're interested onto a program that's free yes free a lot of my supporters and beginners use an app called flip a clip flip a clip has a very simple interface that's great for people who are just getting into animation the app is pretty well made and it provides most of the necessary tools that you'll need to get started so if you want a free program and you're new to animating i would definitely recommend you give it a shot so now to a bit of a more expensive program, a well-known software you can use is Clip Studio Paint. You can get the absolute best version of it for 220 bucks, which I know is a massive jump from the previous programs I listed, but it's definitely worth it if you plan on taking your animation seriously. Clip Studio has a massive amount of tools for animation and art, so if you take your time learning how to use it with the tools provided, you can make some really crazy shit. I tried Clip Studio for a while and I found the integration to be a bit overwhelming, but then again I didn't take too much time learning all the individual buttons and what they do. I really can't say too much about the software because I haven't used it all too much, but I do know it's super dependable and widely used by artists and animators all over the world. Overall, there are so many programs to choose from and I don't have time to go over them all, but here's a pretty good list of them you can check out. Alright, so before you get started animating, you want to make sure you're preparing your scenes properly. The absolute most important way to do this is by creating a storyboard. On your storyboard, you're going to be describing your scenes and what's going on within them. For example, you want to include what your character is doing, what's going on in the background, little movements, and any dialogue or monologue that might be happening. If you're working on the animation alone, do your storyboard in a way that works for you, but if you're working on the animation with the team, you need to make sure that it's easy for them to understand. Your storyboard acts as your main guideline for your animation and it's going to help you organize your scenes. When it comes to your characters, something you're going to want to do is create character palettes. Character palettes are just the groups of colors that a character has and that's what you're going to use to keep the consistency for each scene. You don't want a character's colors to be constantly changing throughout the animation, so this is definitely something you're going to want to use. So this portion of the video is going to consist of things that you want to focus on after you've animated everything, but also some things that you want to focus on before you start animating. And that is voice actors. Unless you're doing a mute project, you're definitely going to need voice actors. A good first place to start is by asking your friends if they want to help out. Only thing is, 9 times out of 10, unless your friend makes content or music, they probably aren't going to have a microphone. At that point, it's either up to you to provide them with one, go to a studio, or very very last resort, have them record lines on their phone. Obviously, if they have to resort to recording lines on their phone, the quality is not going to be so good, which personally for me doesn't work because with the amount of time and work I put into my animations, I want everything clean as possible. Now, if none of these options work for you, another great option is Fiverr. Fiverr offers a lot of different services and it's not too difficult to find voice actors that don't charge too much, so I would definitely search those pages and see what works for you. Some other alternatives that you can give a shot include messaging people on Instagram or TikTok and seeing if they're interested in helping. It's important that you get your voice actors first so you can animate the lip syncing with how the lines were portrayed. Now that I got the voice acting out of the way, let's get into the sound effects. I personally get all my sound effects off YouTube and I'm sure there's other websites you can use that have sound effects but for me, YouTube has been the way to go. Sometimes it can be difficult to find exactly what you're looking for so if you find yourself in that situation, try layering different sounds over each other until you get the desired effect. If you're feeling extra creative, you can even try and make the sounds at home, assuming you have a decent microphone. Music is also important in conveying different emotions so do your best to implement them properly and make sure the songs you use aren't copyrighted. YouTube has a large section to choose from so look for the vibe you're aiming for and put it in your animations accordingly. Obviously, you're going to need some type of software to edit these clips, so some programs I can recommend are iMovie, Adobe Premiere, Vegas Pro, and Final Cut Pro. Editing animations can get very irritating at times, so make sure that you're always saving your progress and taking breaks because you definitely don't want to stress yourself out. Make sure you take your time on the project and pay attention to detail because sound effects do so much for the project and you want to make the most out of them. Alright guys, so those are my tips on how to make your own anime. I tried to fit as much information as I could without taking too much of your time, but I really hope this helped you out. I do plan on diving a bit more in depth on how to use Procreate, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and let me know in the comments. If you guys have any more questions that I didn't get to in this video, drop them in the comments as well. Also, if you found this video useful, go ahead and drop a like or a sub as they are very much appreciated. So that's going to be it for today. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. I love you all.